Hey guys, welcome to the spotlight. You're sitting on the hashtag Magna on Air Digital Network, magnasearchgroup.tv. It's Friday. We have a special guest in our studio today. We have the founders of tidepink.com, the two charity guys. These guys are doing big things in the community, big things across Canada. They're, they're just about to launch their shoelace charity business. Pink shoelace. Pink shoelace charity business out there to the world. We're sitting in the studio with Ryan McCann and co-founder Joel White. Welcome to the studio, guys. Great to have you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Gentlemen, uh, we were uh, very thrilled to have uh, stumbled across uh, your, your charitable organization. I think I uh, ran across Joel last year and he, he told me what some great things that you were doing in terms of tying up uh, breast cancer awareness. Uh, we wanted you to tell, tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, you're two guys in Alberta. You uh, are on a mission to raise breast cancer awareness. You started making pink shoelaces. How did that start and what does Tide Pink do? Well, Ty Pink, the, the laces are, or the company really just exists for the sole purpose of, of creating um, charitable money for the same breast cancer foundation. You know, it was, a, it was an idea that uh, kind of came up organically. We just, uh, the two of us were sitting, literally having a beer and, and talking about uh, different ways that, uh, you know, kind of our successes have come to us and, and looking at the philanthropy of it all and, and looking down at our shoes and we both realized that we were wearing different color laces. Okay. Meanwhile, there was, there was a total spot on the NFL uh, up in, the, in the establishment that we we're sitting on and it just kind of popped into our heads that, hey, why don't we do pink shoelaces and uh, raise money for breast cancer awareness? Yeah, yeah, no, no I, I hear that. And, and of course you see it everywhere. You know, pink is breast cancer month. I think uh, November turns around and everybody's wearing blue, but absolutely. I mean, every major sport leagues in North America, they get the pink helmets, they get the pink socks, you know, all the major sports brands are getting involved with it. I think, uh, I, I think everybody it, it, it can honestly say that they're touched by cancer. Someone that they know has been touched by cancer. So it's, it's, uh, it's a cause that everybody uh, has some personal connection to. Um, yeah. Do you gentlemen have personal stories like that where someone in your life was affected by cancer that, that helped propel you to invest your time and energy in this project? Well, you know, I've got, um, on my wife's side, so she's got uh, two family members to cancer, and uh, I have two young girls as well, and of course Mary. So it's something that's really always sort of in the back of my mind. Um, and, you know, to your point about things, people being affected, it's, it's amazing how many stories have come across and, and the reasons people have bought races. So, you know, you tell a pair of guy and you find that his wife passed away from breast cancer or, you know, or, or mother along, whatever it means. So it's, um, it's sad that it's such that many people, but um, at the same time, it's given us an, an opportunity to, um, to really prepare that message to present that message to, to a, uh, a huge open audience. Yeah, no, no, that, that totally, I can totally relate to that. I mean, one in eight women in the United States, they say, one in nine women in, in Canada, which is the same in Australia. Wow. So we're talking, uh, you know, 25,000 women in Canada, 25,000 in, in Australia, 250,000, which is 10 times the number in the United States, are diagnosed every year as, wow. as new patients that need treatment to kind of offset uh, breast cancer. And that number is, is 10 times that multiple of women currently having treatment or under treatment for breast cancer so you know we're yeah. talking we're talking some some big big numbers what's a, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's 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 what's happening in in life right? as you as you said earlier michael you know sports teams companies they're all embracing this cause you know whether it be part of the cause on the golf course where it be you know the nfl month where everything is pink pink helmet pink shoes yep what so you guys created this business explain to us and our community how your business works exactly what do you want the customer to do when they come to your website well really it's about engagement and awareness um you know at the end of the day when people come to our website we'd like them to buy one two three five ten pairs of shoelaces um our, our goal and our focus is trying to create the awareness so kind of we came up with the strategy of a b-tide pink and that's kind of what mm -hmm. we're running with is is you know it's a challenge uh you know different than any of the other charity challenges out there so to speak but yeah. to put them in your shoes and wear them for the month and you know it's a lot more than just buying a pair of shoelaces and donating ten dollars it's really about creating that visual awareness uh yeah. you know and, and the, the amount of uh, comments and questions that i got last year when i when i made that challenge to myself and wore them in every pair of shoes i had for an entire month 
I went, I went the entire month without wearing uh, several pairs of shoes because I didn't take laces in them. Um, <laughs> And, 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 you know, some of the funny stories that would come up and, and, and the, the funny looks I would get. But, you know, uh, I think one of the, the best stories I have is I was at a, a local hardware store here. And this um, it's, uh, kind of, I guess, rural looking gentleman that was probably in his 60s or 70s, uh, you know, looked like he uh, was giving me the once up and down, wondering what was going on. <laughs> and, and he asked me, he says, what's with the laces? And... Uh, I told him. I told him the. Uh, I told him about the charity and what we were doing, and and his story proceeded to come out about his wife and and losing his life to cancer, and, and it was it was such a moment in my life realizing how, you know, just a simple pair of shoelaces can can really uh, you know affect the way people think. And it also makes you feel like you're a part of it, right? It's it's on you. It's it's on your shoes. You're typically going to wear the same shoes over the next 30 days, right? So well, it, it stands out too. You know, you're, it, you're making yeah. a statement. You know, and uh, I think there's a, a point of difference to myself. You know, when you're wearing the when you're wearing the pink, um, and I've done the pink underwear in the past. You can't really show that off. Like the, yeah. the, the pink shoelaces are out there. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I, it, there's a point of difference between the guys that grow the mustaches in, in November, which yeah. which may or may not be able to pull it off, and being able to promote uh, you know the pink shoelaces on a forward ongoing basis because you're tied to a cause. Yeah, and that symbolism's there. I really like that. And what you guys are doing is obviously so impactful, right? It's 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 it, it's really getting people to think about the cause, think about the awareness. What brought you two together? Um, like what? How did this? How did this all c come to be? The, the simple answer is over beer. <laughs> Was it just simply over a beer? You guys got together and felt you well, know the, be the best sports? ideas in life are on a beer and a napkin, yeah, aren't they? That's right, beer and napkin. <laughs> Uh, over scotch like what brought you guys to get to, together though was it like was there more like uh, was there more of a foundation fundamental to this or a, a friendship or a partnership or a working relationship yeah well ryan and i ryan and i have been friends for years uh and you know it's uh, it's something that um i think when it came back to it it was really about you know trying to do something to make a difference and that's how this really came about it uh um, you know, the partnership, the friendship, and, and, you know, we've never actually worked together, you know, for, for any period of time in our lives. It was just something that we both believed in, and uh, both of us having kind of an entrepreneurial spirit and, and uh, like to do things and like to kind of do startups work, and, and, and it, this was kind of a fun project, you know, as fun as you can be, I guess, raising yeah. money for breast cancer awareness, mm -hmm. but it was it was something to get excited about and something to really try and, uh, and get behind and, and get other people to get behind us. And, and uh, you know, the, the amount of support when you're raising money for, for an organization like the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation is phenomenal. People will line up behind you to help you out. Yeah, it's really, oh, yeah. really yeah. Yeah. No, no, I understand that, that you gentlemen got quite a bit of awareness last year and the Canadian Breast Cancer uh, Association, that they, they in fact uh, provided you with an award or some accreditation. Is that correct? Well, they didn't actually provide us with an award, but they did invite us to uh, several of their events. One of them was the, the Philanthropist of the Year Award. It wasn't wow. uh, our award to, to receive, but it was uh, an invitation to be in the room with some of the great uh, the great uh, fundraisers in, in here. Uh, and then they also invited us to their uh, their Night of Awards, which is uh, their fall event that uh, that uh, recognizes the people that. Um, that uh, you know, raise money. The people that uh, do research in the Edmonton area uh, that uh, you know were very involved with the success of the campaign for the year. Is is Tide Pink also associated with 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 with, with other charities? Or are you your own brand, your own business? Well, we're really set up as our own business. Um, we set it up solely for for fundraising for the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation. Although we're not affiliated with them, we are using their uh, their. Um, their logos and colors and uh, out of uh, out of license, uh, and they've allowed us to do that um, just because of kind of the unique approach that we've taken to this. Yeah. Uh, most most fundraising for for Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation, anyways, is either done by by the licensing and selling for a profit, I guess, and and a percentage of proceeds going, and that's one of their divisions. Okay, and the other division and the other. Um, the other scope of their, their fundraising is through private donations and corporate donations, which generally I mean, that's received. And, you know, when we got set up last year, it was actually it was almost comical because they didn't know what to do with us. You know, we, they, uh, it took them forever to get back to us because, and we thought, oh, 
they don't want to work with us. But the reason it took them so long to get back to us is they didn't know where to put us because uh, we weren't a for-profit company giving the proceeds of our, our of our profits to them, yeah. and we weren't the uh, fundraising company, you know, trying to garner a, a tax receipt out of them either. It was uh, it was back and forth within their office of, of what do we do with these guys until eventually they called us back and they said, "Wow, this is uh, like something we've never had to deal with before. People that want to donate money to us and and don't want anything in return." Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a snowball effect. Did you start off, you know, did you start off giving shoelaces out to the people that you knew first and then all of a sudden it clicked one day and then people were really like, wow, like this is, uh, it's great what you guys are doing, you know, it's something we can wear, colorful shoelaces, and then it kind of snowballed. No, actually we, uh, we, gave, we gave away very few pair. We made people buy them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we uh, you know, we uh, thought that friends in our network would support a ten dollar purchase uh, to put them on and wear them, and and they did. We uh, we never really had to gain support through uh, through you know giving away samples or, or or trying to show them off. You know, we did give a few pair to the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation. We didn't make them buy them, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but we did uh, make sure that everybody in their office, uh, especially all the men in their office. Uh, had a pair to wear for the month. Yeah, that's totally smart. So then going into this uh, uh, this year's campaign that, that uh, I guess technically starts October 1st, you know, how many pairs of shoelaces do you gentlemen have to, to, to get on men in, in Canada or throughout the world? And what is your goal in raising money for this year? We've got 2,050 pairs. So. 2,050, is that what you said? Well, actually, we have a few more than that because we started the campaign already uh, with uh, a few pairs left over from last year. So one day, our corporate sponsors, who is uh, PharmaSave out of the Prairie provinces, yep. agreed, to, agreed to buy 400 pairs before the campaign even started to sell retail in their stores. So wow. really, we've, been, we've got 2,460 pairs to sell, but we've already sold 400 pairs of those. So before we even got started on the campaign, we were already uh, we already raised four thousand dollars. So, cor so corporate business is obviously big for you. So you mentioned PharmaSafe. What other big uh, companies and organizations uh, are you working with right now? We have, uh, as Joe mentioned earlier, we have um, Audi and Volkswagen in a local market here. who have been just absolutely phenomenal with us. They were last year. They signed on again this year. Excellent. And, yeah, we're also working with uh, you know some some, uh, some retail partners, which is a different process here in terms of just to do things. We do have our online uh, channel, of course, uh, but mm -hmm. we've got some retail partners that we're working with. And, and again, everybody we talk to is just, it's just it's been so supportive of the idea. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been uh, a little overwhelming actually to uh, you know to, to make a sales call, so to speak. Yeah. Excellent. Are you guys spending a lot of your time, you know, Monday to Friday, uh, selling, picking up the phone, creating the awareness, getting more people engaged in what you guys are doing? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I said, uh, you know, are you currently doing a lot of business development right now, sales to really help engage what you're doing, really create that awareness, uh, you know, around your community and across North America? Absolutely. You know, it's uh, especially locally. We've been really focused on the local market this year. Uh, and, and as Ryan mentioned, even more so than last year. Um, you know, it's um, the one challenge that we've really found in this is is we don't want to grow too fast. As much as we'd love to be able to uh, to expand to a global market immediately, uh, you know, some of the problems that we face with either of us working in a retailer or a, um, in a manufacturing role in our lives understanding the product lines and, and, the, and the channels that we have to go through and delivery times and, yeah. and times. Deal with customs and just all these little things that we, you know, had to do a learning curve on. And, and that was probably the biggest challenge that we've had through this entire event is, is the learning curve on, on what needs to be done in our timely timelines and, and, um, you know, kind of that, um, that long-term approach to, uh, to gaining people's, um, business and, and support. Excellent. So that's going to lead me to my next question, uh, Ryan and Joel, is um, like you guys, obviously, what's your background? What's your working history? We're in the recruitment business. We're dealing with a lot of people e each and every day that are typically thinking about going out there, starting a brand, starting a company, maybe even starting a charity. Yeah. Like, what is your guys' background? Like, how did you, how did you, you know, you've explained to us how you got to where you are today, but what is your background? What is your history? Do you, what's your education? Well, 
this is uh, Joel here, and I, I studied marketing, and I've been working for the last uh, 13 years in, in uh, food service distribution. So in that channel, it's, it's taught me a lot about you know, distribution, but more importantly, the, the networking and the contacts that I've built over the last several years have really helped me uh, kind of spread the message of this. Um, you know, you, you can never underestimate the power of networking in these types of environments. You know, that everybody knows somebody that knows somebody. And, yeah. and that's really how we got our brand across last that's year true. is by, by leaning on the people that we knew and, and really focusing on them to kind of drive this and, and make connections for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and what about you, Ryan? Yeah, well, I've actually uh, I've been a realtor in the marketplace for, uh, for 15 years and uh, some development on the side. But, uh, you know, just a mere well, common is the network has been the most important thing in growing this business. You know, we both are, um, you know, self started we both been uh, kind of in our business where we started in business every single month in sales. So for us to grow the business um, or grow the charity has been easy because of our personality types. Um, but uh, the, uh, my learning curve was a bit, uh, a bit steeper than Joel's because of its, uh, the nature of his business. But it's been, it's been really, really exciting. You know, and I think if you, yeah, I bet. there's not the question of, you know, kind of what other people need to do to kind of get uh, going and, and start up like this. And really being uh, able to talk to your friends and talk to your colleagues and talk to your network and, and, and not be afraid of the no's. That's, I think, the most important thing is, is, people are going to support you and if you believe in your idea and just talk passionately about it, they're going to get behind you as well. Yeah, and I, I'd agree with that. I mean, you're, do, you're doing something good, you know, and, and it's uh, it, there, there's a big difference when you're passionate about something and uh, you, know, you you put it all out there on the line versus something that uh, is a bit of a chore to do. And I think in this case, you gentlemen are wearing your heart on your sleeves and, uh, you know, really determined to raise awareness and uh, make an impact within the, the fundraising for the Canadian Cancer Society. Yeah, and, you know, there's been, there's been no sacrifice um, before us. There's maybe some other nuances late night that we truly have to think about the people that go through this and the families that go through this. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of personal stories there that um, can't be part of what we're doing. Yeah. So it's, from a perspective standpoint, it's, it's been really easy for us to do that, to put the effort in. And uh, it's, again, it's been really uh, rewarding. No, that's great. You know, I, I think that's uh, that, that's probably the, the the hidden intangible. You know, you're doing something that uh, uh, hits people emotionally, and at the end of the day, it's very rewarding for the two of you guys to be leading the charge. Mm-hmm. We love what you guys are doing. So yep. we want to help increase this. We don't want you guys just to sell 2,050 um, shoelaces. We want to help you sell half a million shoelaces. So yes. what, what what do you need from us to help this? We got a community. We got an audience. They're watching. They're engaging. How can we get them to buy some shoelaces from you? What do they need to do? I think, you know, we're, what would make the biggest difference to us is, of course, as well right now, and it would be um, some corporate sponsors. It would be willing to get behind the cause. Okay. Uh, but, you know, individual sales are fine, too. But yeah. Corporate sponsors, people in the, uh, in the, uh, the men's uh, shoe or merchandising uh, category, that can lend us some expertise um, would be highly advantageous. You know, at the end of the day, trying to sell, you know, 250,000 pairs of shoelaces uh, over the internet uh, may be a little challenging with packaging and, and shipping, but, oh, yeah. you know, I think one step for us is going to be getting into more and more retail partners and, and having that distribution model across Canada, across North America, and maybe even across the world so that we can, you know, um, have multiple people selling for us on one page. Yeah, no, and I think it's uh, I think it's very achievable. I mean, when you look at the product category that you have, it's 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 obviously it's targeted, you know, to both men and it could be towards women as well. It's a one size product, uh, so it, like in terms of uh, limiting your SKUs and having a focused product category, I, I think you gentlemen are on the right track. Uh, and I'm coming I'm coming from that perspective of having a background in men's fashion. Um, you know, I do think that, that it all really comes down to awareness. And uh, the more people you touch, the more people that you'll get excited about what yeah. you're doing. And uh, you're going to find that support is going to be organic. Uh, it probably, it'll continue to surprise you, to be honest with you, because it's it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, people will stop and they'll consider, you know, how 
it's impacted their life. And uh, because there's an emotional tie there, and, and there is a, a pun or a play on words, but because of that emotional tie, they, uh, they want to share and they want to be a part of that community. And I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. So we want our viewers to go to tidepink.com and, uh, you know, check out what Joel and Ryan are doing. Uh, spread the word, you know, share this with your network. Uh, we're, we're thrilled to be a part of this uh, for the first time in 2015. And we look forward to supporting you gentlemen for years to come. Take her home. Uh, don't forget to check us out at facebook.com slash tidepink and our hashtag is tidepink Instagram and Twitter. Perfect. You know. Perfect. You guys hear that? Facebook and Instagram. Connect with them on Facebook. Connect with them on Instagram. Um, we want to help them create more awareness. We want more corporations to come on board. We're willing to help support your brand. We love what you guys are doing. Yep. Thanks so much for being with us today, Ryan uh, McCann and Joel White. It was absolutely great having having you here. Um, for, our, for, for our community, our audience, make sure you subscribe to our iTunes network. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we're blowing up. We're bringing you a hot interview each and every Friday. We're putting people under the spot. Light. Thank you once again, guys, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>